Oh, I've told you. Good afternoon, I'm Taylor Crampton. I'm a senior here at Goochland and the BRVGS program. My senior project focused mostly around movement and music. So first of all, I wanna talk about why I chose this topic. I have grown up around music since literally the moment I could walk. My dad has a degree in jazz performance from Virginia Commonwealth University. Uh, I've been taking dance lessons and singing ever since I was little and Something actually really near and dear to my heart on a more personal note happened this past spring. My sister and I had been taking voice lessons with the head of the voice department at Virginia Commonwealth, whom was a close family friend of ours. She met my dad when he was pursuing his degree. She, uh, my sister and I had been taking lessons with her for about two years, private voice lessons, and she taught me absolutely so much about vocal health, how to take care of your voice, how to sing in a healthy way, how to ensure you're, you have great pitch and great vowel shape. And unfortunately, she passed away in a tragic accident last spring. And so when I thought about what I wanted to do for my senior project over the summer, I wanted to do something where I felt like I could really share the knowledge that I gained from her and do something that would make her really, really proud. So I'm actually gonna start off talking about my research. So originally my research question focused around specifically just arts extracurriculars, but when I went to go pursue that to actually write the research paper, I found out that there's not a lot of research specifically focusing on just arts extracurriculars. So I had to broaden my question to all extracurricular activities. And summed up, mostly what I found in my research is that acad academic um, extracurriculars tend to increase high IQ, better brain development, lead to higher test scores, and lead to increased rates of depression and anxiety, as well as um, actually that activities in the arts like the visual arts and music and things like band and choir actually lead to increased creativity and individuality individuality and lower rates of depression and anxiety. Something that I actually came across that was a huge problem for me in my research is that there's actually not a lot of research about extracurricular activities in general. A lot of the research that I found was extremely old. I think the oldest case study I used was from 1970, which when you think about it is about 50 years ago. So for me personally, I didn't feel super comfortable making a really strong case and drawing really, really strong definitive uh, positions from my research because a lot of the research was so old and may not be up to date with extracurriculars today because obviously things are a little bit different now than they were in 1970. So what I did was just mostly drew the clearest and easiest general positions that I could from my research, which is what I basically just said about academia and arts extracurriculars and their differences and similarities. The next thing I'll talk about is my internship. I spent a whole day at Randolph Elementary School with Ms. Alden Blevins. She is the music teacher there. She has a bachelor's in music education from Virginia Commonwealth University as well as is certified to teach K through 12. I spent the whole day there with her and I observed her kindergarten through fifth grade classes for the whole day. She was such a nice lady. She was so welcoming having me in her class and all of the children that I met and experienced were so, so sweet. Uh, we spent a lot of time with Rhythm Speak as well as how to integrate music education for different levels of education. So some of the kids coming into the kindergarten class may have never even seen a piece of sheet music in their life. So it's really interesting learning to teach from, for the lowest common denominator learning to teach for the kids who've never seen sheet music, don't know anything about singing, don't know anything about instruments, and then getting to see them progress all the way up until the fifth grade when they've had a full five years, four or five years of music education and all that they learn. Something that I actually had a really interesting discussion with her about though is actually the choir program here at GMS and GHS. And she said that what she and a lot of school teachers uh, tend to see is that they have a lot of kids who, when they sign up for their middle school classes, will sign up for chorus but can't get in because there are actually too many kids who want to take chorus. And there's no way to preference kids who really are passionate about chorus and love it versus the kids who get funneled into it because they need an arts credit. So one thing that I've been discussing with the music teacher here at 
GHS and GMS, Miss Susan Duty, who teaches me in jazz choir class and has taught me all the way through middle school, is talking about a potential way to preference kids who are really passionate about music, thinking of pursuing it, versus the kids who just need an arts credit. So for my community service, I co-directed Peter Pan Jr. at Goochland Middle School with fellow Blue Ridge senior Sydney Myler. One thing I am super proud about is that we ha actually had a lot of Blue Ridge involvement in uh, Peter Pan. We had several sophomores, my little sister Emma Crampton, Caroline Webb, Cullen Parrish, all involved in Blue Ridge, as well as a junior, Stuart Taylor, who was our stage manager. So I set myself a goal also of raising about $2,000 to fund back into the drama department. We started off with a $5,000 budget and we actually undershot and we saved $500 that we did not spend. And we exceeded our $2,000 goal raising about $4,000. So all of that money that we saved and raised went straight back into the Goochland Drama Department to fund our spring production of Hairspray. And my role mostly in the middle school musical was I did a lot of the music direction and the choreography. I taught almost every single song in the show with a lot of help and I choreographed almost every single dance in the show. So I am gonna talk quickly through the rehearsal process. I actually started this uh, project in spring of last year, so about March. And it finished up in January of this year, so it actually took place over the course of a year. I logged 150 hours of community service and that's only starting from October to January and that's only counting school time. So any work I did over the summer and in the spring did not uh, count towards my hours for Blue Ridge. But we started auditions on the last week of October and that was a full week. So we stayed basically until nine o'clock every night working through everything. We had two rounds of dance auditions, two rounds of voice auditions and callbacks. It was a whole great, it was a whole big production. It took a really long time. It was one of the most stressful things I've ever had to do. You learn so much about how to be adaptable and how to go with the flow and accept changes and accept that just no matter how hard you try to put things to a schedule, it's not always gonna come out exactly that way. So after auditions, we started rehearsals Monday through Thursday from 3.30 to 5.30. Once we hit December, we added a Friday rehearsal. We also had two Saturdays where we had set builds and we had rehearsals. Kids came in on the weekend from about nine to 12 and we spent all that time teaching dances and reviewing and just making progress as we needed to. When we came back from winter break in January, uh, the kids actually performed the last two Thursdays and Fridays of January, so uh, 25th and 26th. And um, we had our tech week, the, that long week, and basically what tech week is, for those of you who have never been in a theater production, it is the week where you go and you integrate all the sound and all the light and all the microphones, and you stay until about 9 p.m. every single night. So I was handling about 60 middle schoolers for seven hours a day during that week, not including how late we had to stay to clean up after, how late we had to stay to due to technical difficulties. So it was definitely a lot of time and effort, but I can go ahead and say that it was so, so rewarding. So actually, we faced a lot of issues during Peter Pan. We had a lot of issues with attendance, with kids just not coming for no apparent reason. We had a lot of issues with obedience and kids just seeming to not understand authority. And both us and with our mentor, Ms. Heather Wilkins, she is a sub teacher here at GHS and GMS. She's currently in a long-term sub gig at GMS. And she was technically, her technical term was our producer. She also handled a lot of our um, business sort of things that Sydney and I weren't quite sure how to handle. Like how do you put in a purchase order and how many of these do we need to order and how many pieces of wood do you actually need to build this set? And it was really interesting to watch her and get to see and understand just how much work actually does go into a production because I've been in theater for four years now. I've been in choir for even longer. So getting to see what directors and producers actually have to do and the sheer scope of the work is was really amazing and eye-opening and I have just brand new respect for my director and everything that he has to do. So 
for my legacy, the legacy that I'm leaving with the Gucci Drama Department will be the incoming class of freshmen that have a new level of music education, something that I focused on a lot when I ran music rehearsals was not only this is what you're singing, but this is why you're singing it. And that was what I took a lot from my internship was seeing how Mrs. Blevins was able to communicate and again, teach to the lowest denominator. And um, I was able to take that and use that information and experience that I gained to teach music rehearsals in Peter Pan. So, and then I also will be leaving a fundraiser with the Goochland High School Drama Department. They'll be doing a dance-a-thon sometime in May that will actually go forward to do a scholarship. And also, the last thing is all the money that we raised and saved during Peter Pan will go actually previously went straight into our spring production of Hairspray here at the Drama Department. And it's this weekend, definitely come see it. It's gonna be a great show. So what I learned about myself also is that I tend to be a very passive person and I don't like to stand up for myself and I don't like conflict, but I realized that I can do that. I have the qualities of a leader and I can continue to develop the qualities of a leader as I go on throughout my life. And that also, Leading is not just about yelling and being in charge. Leading is about setting a good example, setting a healthy example for what you want these kids to um, grow up to be. I actually had a really heartwarming moment with some of the eighth grade girls backstage after one of the shows. They came to me and they told me, you know, this is my favorite production I've ever done. Like, I love you so much. And one of the kids came up to me and they said, I want to be just like you when I grow up, which to me, I was always that kid who was saying, I wanna be just like you when I grow up. So having somebody say that to me made me really feel like I had made a difference. And I, what I had done had come full circle and I had gone from looking up to other people to having other people look up to me. And also my advice for incoming seniors is that, so I know I'm not going to pursue music education and I knew that when I started this project. And there's a lot of precedent that this senior project should be something that you use to further your career and explore your career. I knew that this wasn't gonna be my career, but it was something that I was really, really passionate about. And it's something that I love and I've been doing for so long. And I feel like it was a great, great way for me to close out my senior year and really give back to the drama department. So it doesn't have to be your career is what I would say. It's great if it is, but it doesn't have to be. And if it's not, that's okay. Because when you're doing what you love, it never really feels like work. As for my future plans, I will be attending James Madison University in the fall with a plan major of BA in political science, as well as a potential double major in international relations. And that about wraps it up. Any questions? Kaylee. So they actually have one of the best musical theater departments in the state of Virginia. So it's actually really, really competitive and it's hard to be involved unless you are an MT major. But I do plan to hopefully join an acapella group and keep involved with music and singing and I'll do that for the rest of my life. Oh, you, okay, sorry. What skills do you think from this production that will help you in like a political science or international studies? I think the leadership, st the leadership skills that I gained realizing that I don't have to be so passive all the time and that also that leading is not just yelling. Leading is a good example. <laughs> That was going to be my question. Like, what advice would you give producers that they're going to go into a similar experience next year? Like, what advice specifically do you like you obviously as a um, I would tell them to approach it with compassion. You never know what's going on in somebody else's lives that's causing them to act the way that they do. You never know what somebody's going through. You never know 
what somebody's going on, what's going on at home, what mental illnesses they may be dealing with. Just you never know what somebody's going through. So before you get angry or before you start to react out of flash anger, take a second and think about it with compassion and try to understand where, why, where they're coming from and why they may be acting that way. Okay.